Welcome back to Open Line. If you are just joining us tonight, thank you, first of all, for being with us. Tonight, we're talking about business development in the state of Tennessee, and I have Commissioner Bob Roth joining me. He is the uh, head of the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. Commissioner, welcome back once again. Thank you, Carrie. We have been talking about uh, the deal with Ford in just east of Memphis that's coming, the biggest single investment in the state of Tennessee to happen. Big news last week. And um, I just want to remind our producer because I'm, thank you, Emma, I, just, I couldn't hear our guest tonight. But um, as we move forward, I want to talk about the Oracle deal, and uh, which has been on the books now for just a bit, but it does hit closer to home here in the Nashville area. And really a very, very large deal um, just before we we heard about this Ford announcement. Let, put it in perspective what the Oracle deal means <laughs> for, for Nashville. So, Carrie, that is the largest job creation project in the state's history. And so Oracle made the decision to not only invest $1.4 billion to build this campus across the river, but ultimately hire about 8,500 people. And so from a jobs perspective, this is a huge home run. Um, when I think of Oracle, it may not be a household world for a lot of Tennesseans. At the same time, it's one of the great technology companies. At the same time, they have one of the greatest uh, when it comes to being a corporate citizen. Uh, so we traveled out to California. We met with this team. We did our own diligence. And again, the great news is they are gonna be transforming uh, what we call uh, the north side right across the river. And their model is to not only offer fantastic family wages, but also really be a part of the community. So uh, when I say part of the community, I think where Nashville and Middle Tennessee will win is they will be the ones that are gonna invest in philanthropy. They're interested in making sure that we've got affordable housing. They're making sure that they're going to be interested in our schools. And so a lot of things that are important to Nashvilleians, we think that they're going to be maybe one of the best uh, partners. You know, one of the criticisms that, that came immediately after this deal was announced was from people who live on the north side. And they said, no one was consulted. No one had a say in Oracle and their big plans for our community. How do you respond to that? So, Carrie, obviously this was a project like all the projects. They're all highly confidential. They're all very competitive. I would simply say the great news is there's no displacement of housing. So it's not like Oracle's coming into a family neighborhood and destroying the housing. This is a this is an area on the on the river, the Cumberland River, that was an industrial park on a good day. And really the tax base I think at the time was about seven or eight hundred thousand dollars a year on this sixty five acre campus. And so there was no displacement. And what we are excited about is Oracle's going to spend on top of this billion dollar investment, they're going to spend another $175 million in infrastructure. And that is going to include green space. That's going to include um, walking paths. That's going to include a campus that's going to be very friendly to the community and the neighborhood. Um, we at the state are going to be also connecting those neighborhoods underneath the interstate. And we'll be adding another exit uh, that is near the campus. So. I can promise you that uh, they have been very thoughtful, and I hear you. I did I have uh, come to understand that there is some criticism from certain pockets uh, locally that they were not consulted. And mm -hmm. so um, I can, I, at the same time, I can tell you, I, I know the Oracle team, and they'll be very intentional about making sure that they will listen to and they will make sure that they impact our city in the most positive way without creating this placement of homes and families. Let's talk about the deals from both sides. First of all, what is the state extending to draw Oracle here? All right, so in this case, our state commitment <clears throat> is $65 million, which is a one-time capital grant. It's not actually, it's a, it's a fast track, an ECD grant that will help Oracle offset some of their costs to because as you can imagine they're 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 putting up a billion four 
And so our state has come to the table with some incentives, again, funded by the uh, General Assembly, who funds our budget. And uh, there will be all the clawbacks and all the protections because, as we know, these are state taxpayer dollars. At the same time, we feel like this was a very incentive appropriate transaction to bring a company that's a global brand to our state. And I just am constantly reminded that every project we compete for is, is competitive. And so it's not like we're competing with another community in Tennessee. We're competing with every state that is contiguous to, uh, to our state. And on a campus like this that has these kinds of family wages jobs, 125 to $130,000 a year, these kind of projects are just highly coveted and so every other state was competing for this same campus. Is there any um, restriction on making sure some of those jobs or a certain percentage of those jobs are Tennessee workers and so they're not all imported from elsewhere? Well, that's a great question. So as part of our accountability agreement, we are not so granular that we dictate to companies that are coming to Tennessee where they hire people and how they go about that process. Uh, at the same time, I can tell you Oracle is very intentional about hiring Tennesseans. And I can say that to you, uh, the success from the Alliance Bernstein transaction to bring that at the time was one of our great wins a couple of years ago, and that's financial services coming from Midtown Manhattan, moving their headquarters. What we're all pleased to know is at the end of the day of those 1,250 jobs, about 60% of them were jobs for Tennesseans mm -hmm. or jobs for people that had moved to Tennessee. And so we should win because again, these jobs will be not only for Tennesseans, but they will also be jobs that will require those professional people to come to Tennessee. And of course, that's gonna grow a city that continues to grow and also, I think in this case, because of the wages, uh, it's just, again, maybe one of the most highly sought after projects, certainly uh, that the state uh, has been able to successfully pursue. Can you give me the timeline of when we will actually start to see Earth moved and, and these jobs starting? All right, so a little bit like when Amazon uh, built the tower that they're getting mm -hmm. ready to occupy, Oracle will start bringing jobs to Tennessee. They will rent temporary space and they're about that process right now as they start to build out their footprint. My sense is they will start the construction probably in early early next year. So I'm going to say a couple of months away. Uh, it requires a whole host of permits uh, to make sure that they follow all the local uh, requirements here in Nashville. But uh, my sense is they'll be off to the races here in a couple of short months. And when do you expect it to all wrap up? Well, their project is a campus that's going to be basically a three-phased build-out. So I think the first phase is a 500,000 square foot uh, building, and then that they will follow up with a second phase, which I think is another four or 500,000 square feet. And then the third uh, phase of the campus will be at the remaining uh, four or 500,000 feet. So that process that build out will probably take about eight years so the great news is it's not like 8500 jobs are all going to show up in middle tennessee at the same time i can also tell you what, what we're excited about and this isn't just about what's going on in nashville but these projects that are coming to nashville and to middle tennessee the seven contiguous counties are going to be i think the exceptional winners and i say that to you not everybody wants to live in downtown nashville or the gulch or live in nashville but a lot of these people that are coming here that really have a, fa a very strong family uh, ideal will be living outside of the community of Nashville. So it's not like we're just gonna, sh these, companies, these guys are gonna show up and uh, inundate because as you know, when you talk about that size, you're talking about education, you're talking about housing, you're talking about healthcare, and you're talking about the infrastructure to support those jobs. That's right. And those families. What, what cities are we competing with mostly right now or even states when it comes to these sorts of deals? Okay, so on the uh, what I'll call the white collar jobs and projects, um, Texas is in every conversation. North Carolina, specifically the Raleigh, Durham and the Charlotte area, Atlanta, Georgia, a couple of uh, markets in Florida. Those seem to be the states and communities that are the most competitive. 
And when you look at a quality of life, you can quickly see, and I think we're Nashville and Middle Tennessee has done an exceptional job. And this goes back to what's going on at the airport. Uh, the fact that our city, uh, Mayor Cooper and Doug Crulin and his team out at uh, the airport authority spending $1.4 billion to expand an already outstanding airport. Well, that's important because these companies want to have access. I think today we can fly out of the Nashville airport to 80 plus markets nonstop, which is very healthy. Not only has the airport expanding, but I understand that their expansion plans are expanding again to meet the growth. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a couple of years ago, the, the, the nonstop flight uh, British Airways before the pandemic to, to, to London, a very big win. And of course, when you land in London, you can uh, change planes to travel to another 135 different markets across the globe. So again, kudos. That's what makes uh, these kinds of projects successful. Having a great healthy airport, a great quality of life, and really having a great tax base and really having uh, the no personal income taxes. And I think about what we do in Tennessee that separates us from a lot of these states that have the personal income tax. So again, I think that now this didn't happen overnight and the city of Nashville and the great success didn't happen overnight as well. This is years and years, uh, you know, that in the making. And the great news is right now it is our time to shine. And I tell our team to put the keep the foot on the gas because, mm -hmm. Carrie, I can assure you at some point we are going to have a recession. And as I love to tell our team, the more companies that call Tennessee home, the softer the landing when that recession does end up uh, impacting not only the communities in Middle Tennessee, but uh, the communities across our state. That makes a lot of sense. We're going to pause and take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us.